Hello, I am just getting to home goods. Um, I'm gonna fuel my pillow addiction. I just wanna do a small makeover on our living room. Um, there's just a couple things about it that have never fully felt like they came together for me. <laughs> so I would like to find a couple new throw pillows or throw pillow covers. So the covers would be my ideal. So um, we're gonna run in here, see if we can find anything. And then I'll show you what else um, I have in mind. <laughs> I always say it's funny when the Halloween stuff is right next door to the Christmas stuff. <laughs> Literally, Halloween, Christmas. <laughs> oh man, I'm not ready for Christmas <laughs> quite yet. Okay, I haven't found the throw pillows yet, but isn't this a pretty picture frame for only $5.99? I like keeping picture frames for gifts like with a photo in it, so I have just the person in mind. So, um, all right, I think I'm gonna grab this and then we'll see if we can uh, find the pillows. <laughs> pillows oh these are kind of pretty kind of like the texture on those so my thought with green is that it'll kind of match what I have going on in the kitchen right now but then I can also it'll like work for Christmas and then into spring too so I feel like it'll be versatile um, so these are $20 each which is a little more than I like to spend so I'm gonna think about it we might have found a solution. How cute is that? It ties the green in with the blue from our couch. And then I was also just noticing, that's kind of pretty too. Can you do plaid with like a botanical pattern? Okay, I feel like this is gonna come together now, at least. I do, I like the plaid and the green together. It's just kind of a fun thing. All right, I think this might work. I didn't, <laughs> silly me, I didn't get a cart because I actually didn't really think I was gonna find anything. So I'm gonna go track down a cart and then there's another throw blanket that I saw. This is not good, it's not good. Okay, so the throw pillows are for the blue couch and then for the leather couch, <sighs> this is really pretty and it's also like super soft. So especially now it's cooling down, we like to have like snuggly blankets on the couches or it's where everyone goes when they wake up in the morning. And so, I think this would look really pretty on that couch too. So I think I'm gonna grab that too and then we should head out. Okay, well that was actually kind of fun. You realize that, well first, I'm sorry I had gum in my mouth. I never have gum, so I'm sorry about that. That was rude. But you realize that I justify my pillow addiction by saying, well, I have friends over like every week. So of course I want the house to look really nice, right? So. Thank you for coming over so I can justify buying pillows. I actually don't buy them all that often. In fact, most of these that I have here are at least, they're going, they're one year or two years old. So, and they get abused. After a while, I don't protect them anymore. And then they just get destroyed. So anyways, that's how I justify it. <laughs> In my video this past Friday, I was like, I might have an infatuation with cake stands. And then someone was like, and throw pillows. And I'm like, oh right, and throw pillows. So anyways, it is what it is. Um, this is one of the few rooms that I do makeover. So on a daily basis, this is pretty much what this space looks like. I don't love the coffee table. I would still like to find a different coffee table at some point, but it's fine. It gets used so much. Like there's always some kind of Lego building or project going on on it. So it needs to be, be sturdy and durable. And so this one has been holding up really well. It's just, I don't know. It's not as cute as I would like for it to be. So why don't we pick up this room quick and vacuum and then we can put some of this new stuff in place. I'll show you my end tables too. I'm still not sold on the end tables. You can help me decide if we should keep them or not or just send those back to. So, and of course, I'm always joking about throw pillows and stuff, but the real heart of this room is the sofa. Thank you Allform for sponsoring today's video and thank you for our Allform sofa. Allform is a company that makes modular sofas and chairs that are completely customizable. You get to choose the material, you get to choose the color, you get to choose the configuration, what shape would you like for it to be? You can't really tell, but this room is kind of long and narrow and we just had such a hard time 
finding the right sofa that would fit in here, but not be too big because our house is actually very small. <laughs> and so it was really difficult to find a couch that fit just this space. And so to be able to go online, to look at the different options and to be able to fully customize it for our space, was so cool. So we have a three seat sofa in teal with a chaise end. And then once you've designed your sofa, it gets delivered to your door in small boxes. So it's very manageable and so easy to bring in. And you can set it up in like 20 minutes. It didn't take a long time. In fact, the kids helped Tom put ours together. It was really quick and easy. And then once it's together, you get a hundred days to test it out. So let the kids sit on it and jump on it and read on it and watch TV on it. and. Do all your things that you do on a sofa and test it out for yourself. We've actually had our all form sofa for an entire year now and we're so pleased with how it's kept its shape and how well the material <laughs> cleans up. It is pet and stain resistant, but isn't it funny how you can like have these rules like no eating on the couch, no drinking, no like dirty clothes, like don't come from outside playing and go on the couch and yet it still seems to happen from time to time. And so even though the kids live on this sofa, you would never know by looking at it. And anytime we have gotten like a little spot or anything on it, you just take a microfiber cloth to it and it cleans up so well. So we're very happy with how the material has held up. Plus all farm sofas are made right here in the US and shipping is included in the US as well. If you use our link down below, you can save 20% off your own custom sofa. And then you can start enjoying it too and picking out just the right throw pillows for it. almost forgot. I might have got this, this pumpkin that lights up too. How pretty is that? So I don't generally put a centerpiece on this coffee table uh, again, because it's usually like project central, but I feel like the kids are at ages now enough where we can have some things like this and it's okay. So we'll put that out too. Okay, I moved all the pillows over to the this couch, and so we have a clean slate. So I'm gonna bring out the new pillows and throw a blanket, and I might use a couple of these old ones, so we'll just see if we can get a good configuration with those. Right. Tom just walked by and he's like, oh, it's amazing what a difference the darker colored pillows makes. And I'm like, I know, I kind of like it. He's like, I do too. So I'm like, all right, now don't sit on them. <laughs> right? Don't do that thing where you wad it up behind your back. So darn it. I was just like, I should get a really nice shot before of how it looks with all the pillows because these pillows will get put away after you leave today. Like when the kids get back home, the old pillows go on the couch and I line those up very nicely behind the couch and I only take them out when you come to visit again. <laughs> so I just glanced under the coffee table though. We need to sort through those games really quick before the kids get home, um, get that straightened up. Then we can do like our final pretty uh, master shot of how this all looks all together. Okay, so down here is where we keep like our family games. So we usually keep like four down here cause that's like what will comfortably fit. But we've gotten some new ones. Gage just got Tetris. Not like the video game you and I used to play when we were growing up, but it's actual like, it's a cool, um, like kind of board game style game. And it's been fun to play. I can school the kids in it, right? And they're like, how are you so good? And I'm like, because we grew up playing Tetris. So <laughs> anyways, yes, yeah, so that's what I'm proud of these days. So this I wanna keep down here. Um, Rummy Cube is our standby. Like that's, we play that all the time. This is a fun game too, Buildy. It's actually kind of a lot like Tetris. And the kids like to play it if like other, friends come over you know checkers chess this is fun but this doesn't get played quite as often anymore this still gets played quite a bit we have random papers yep that happens at our house too and dominoes i think those could go away and by the way i'm just gonna put them in the closet upstairs so we can still bring them back out it's just that the ones we have like accessible right here are just a few so highlighter random playing cards we have a basket down here too that we put the actual like card games in. 
This is a puzzle. This can go upstairs with one of the pieces outside of it. That is never good, right? A thousand piece uh, puzzle. Maggie actually did this, so that was fun for her. We like this game a lot too, Sequence for Kids, but it could probably take a break for now. Zingo is fun, but that could go away for now too. Sequence, States and Capitals. The girls were trying to learn their States and Capitals over the summer, so they were using this, but they, they passed their test. They have it all memorized. So I think no one actually plays that game anymore. All right, some random garbage that can get put away. And I think, I think we'll just keep these four games down here for now, and that's gonna be plenty and make it look a little bit less messy under there. All right, I'm gonna go run these upstairs, and then, then I think we can take the final look at it. All right, so Diana's just getting here with the kids, speak of the devil. <laughs> so we'll get her reaction on the pillows. They were at co-op today, so she, she brought them home. Hi, Adeline. Hi. <laughs> I'm not trying to video you, I'm trying to video on Diana. Okay. Okay. Okay, take a look around, let me know what you think. I love it. I actually really like it. Thanks. I love the greens. I love the earth tones that we have going on around, you know, these yeah. things. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you and I are going to record a video for your channel. Mm -hmm. So that'll play tomorrow. So I will add a link for that. Um, what are we going to talk about? Oh, we're just going to catch up a little bit. So okay. it's like this weird fall orange, but also we've been doing a lot of Christmas planning. We have been. Christmas yeah. planners are out. We just finished up our week of Christmas planning workshop. Yep. Um, I, do I look thinner? I hired a personal trainer. <laughs> so there's, there's well, lots you, to catch up on. You kind of just put everyone on the spot. Yeah. So, um, this doesn't this make me flattering. Look, no, no, no. <laughs> you gotta, like, wow. Stand. It reminds me of the friends episode. I want to quit the gym. <laughs> like, yeah. so didn't even, didn't even start the gym. Okay. 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 We'll see. Well, I guess we have a lot to catch up on. So that'll be on Diana's channel. And then, so I'm going to take a break quick. I imagine I have to change and put on something a little cuter. Um, so we'll video quick and then I'll come back you. and finish visiting <laughs> with you. All right, so Diana and I finished videoing and I just realized we didn't talk about the end tables. So I have two of these end tables here. I know I showed them in another video. Um, one of you said like they're not right because they're round and they shouldn't be round. They should be more like rectangular. And I, I think I agree with that here. Let me switch around. So I liked that it is like small in size and I kind of like the black base, but I kind of wish it was like a gold or bronze. Tom's in the kitchen. He's like, no gold. <laughs> so I don't know. I think they're okay. And I have the other one on that side. Originally I thought we'd put one on each side, but I don't think we need one on each side. And I kind of like just having this end open and having nothing there. So then my thought was, why don't we put this one at the end of this couch um, closer to the window? So then each couch has an end table and then we can keep this area open. So I don't know. I'd be curious what you think. I think too, cause those are round and then this table has a square top. I think they, they don't quite go together, but let me know what your thoughts are. I'm kind of impressed by the difference that four pillows and a throw blanket can make. Um, it feels like completely different in here. Just with that, that's probably been one of the best benefits of simplifying our houses. I feel like I can make some of these like seasonal changes and stuff, and it actually doesn't take a whole lot <laughs> to make a difference. We had also, I didn't mention um, the area rug. We had updated this when we got our new couch, and so I can link to this as well. Um, at first, it felt a little busy, but I think it's okay. It's grown on me um, a lot. I'm not sure about the pumpkin on the table. It's throwing me off a little bit. It feels a little cluttered in here now having something on the table when I'm so used to it being cleared off. So I'm not, I like it. I think the white circle's a little too much. I think it needs to be a little more muted. Anyways, we'll continue to work out those in details. Um, we also, I was gonna tell you, we just finished our five days to an organized Christmas. So for anyone who participated, it was super fun. Thank you for doing so. But I did wanna let you know that we have all the replays saved. So every day this past week, we went live, Diane and I went live, and we just had different topics that we covered. And then there's a free printable planner that went along with it. So I'll put that sign up in the description. If you still wanted to sign up, you would get links to the replays and then the, the planner too. And then if you want to join the private Facebook group, 
there's a lot of really valuable information there because we were just brainstorming tons and tons of gift ideas. So there's tons of links, tons of different scenarios people were sharing um, that they wanted like specific ideas for. So you might find a lot of help in there as well if that's useful for, for you. If not, that's totally fine. Um, but one thing we mentioned yesterday on our live were these bucket filler books. Have you heard of these before? Um, when I got them, Maggie had said they read this one in school um, when they were in public school. So there's like a secular one, which is like, have you filled a bucket today? I know they're very popular. And then there's also one, the greatest bucket filler, which is God. So there's more of a faith-based one. And then this is cool too. This is for a little bit older kids growing up with a bucket full of happiness. But how it even came up was that a question came up on the live of what do you do about negative comments in regards to how much or how little you get your kids for Christmas? Um, I know many who are trying to scale back. Uh, there is comments from others, <laughs> right? Um, I mean, we've heard it all over the years. Not always like from our family. Our family is great, but like from, you know, publicly and stuff, different comments. And it, it actually brought this to mind because we have been reading these. And the premise of the book is that everybody has a bucket and that when you do kind things for other people, you fill up their bucket and you fill up your own. But there are also bucket dippers out there who take from other people's buckets in an attempt to fill their own. But unfortunately, when you take from others, you empty theirs and you empty yours too. So the only way to fill your bucket is by filling others. And you can fill your own bucket too. But um, it, it was just like, it was such a good premise. So we're, we're answering this question like, what do you do about like snarky comments or different things that come up? And it just made me think of it like, ah, it's unfortunate that they have to be a bucket dipper, right? I mean, sometimes people are just genuinely curious why we're doing what we're doing and why we've decided to cut back. But other times it just feels like they're not, right? Like they're not, they're not information gathering. They're just being unkind or nosy or whatever, right? And so we talked about bucket dippers <laughs> and a little bit and, um, I don't know, it's tough because in the past I tried to explain to them and bring them along so they to help them understand like what I was, you know, what we were trying to accomplish and why we were doing this. And now I kind of try to just let it go because usually my attempts to explain or justify don't really go over super well um, or they just still don't come around. So it feels like it's just a waste of my breath, quite frankly, because I have to remind myself that like, We've been on this journey for many years. I have really developed a strong value for simple living and for having less to manage and for my, for our holidays to revolve a little bit less around the physical gifts and more around just time together and traditions and that. And so I have changed my values around all of this, but they don't necessarily understand that. They haven't always been along for the ride with that. And so, it, can I really expect them to fully come around in one texting conversation or something like that? No, not usually. So I usually just say something like, you know, it's something that Tom and I have put a lot of thought into and what we've decided is best for our family right now in this season, it could change in the future. Um, but for this Christmas, this is what we've decided to do. And so does that like that, do they ever go like, oh, right, got it. No, not usually, <laughs> right? But I've said my piece and then, we move on. So sometimes they're like truly a bucket dipper and nothing you say is going to make any difference, no matter how carefully you word it. And other times I do think they sincerely want to know more, but these books have been fun. Even, you know, Adeline's 12, almost 13 now, and it's still given us language now just to be like, Hey, don't dip in their bucket, right? Or what are we going to do today to fill someone else's bucket? And so it's just kind of fun to have another resource and language around how we're treating others and that kind of thing. So anyways, I will link to these books down below because um, I think they've been really helpful and they're really good. They can make a great Christmas present. And so that'll be down below. But otherwise, thank you for hanging out with me today while we just did kind of a mini uh, refresh and, and reset on our living room. I intentionally keep this room very simple because there's so much activity that goes on in here that I found by just keeping it really simple um, that it makes it easy to pick up and tidy up at the end of the day outside of my throw pillows, right? But <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so I would love to know, well, I was going to say like, how many throw pillows do you have in your house? No, <laughs> I would like your input on the end tables. 
Um, do you like the darker, darker pillow arrangement? If you care, some people are like more visually interested in that kind of stuff than others. And others like, I wouldn't have even noticed that you put different throw pillows, right? Anyways. And do you do anything like seasonally to kind of like reset your house? So, um, I think I'm looking for others to say, it's okay if you get new throw pillows every once in a while. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I hope that you have a really great weekend. I love you and I'll see you again soon.